So as many of you have probably seen already, all across YouTube and media space, Microsoft has decided to introduce a new form of computers called Copilot Plus PC. They just had their conference where they introduced these PCs, but I couldn't wait to make a video because I want to talk about one glaring issue here and why it may be time to switch to a different operating system. With this new Copilot Plus PC system, Microsoft is promising a whole bunch of things, including faster and more secure PCs, of course, AI and other performance enhancements and improvements, but looking past all of that, I want to focus on a very specific mention. During their event where they introduce Copilot plus PCs down towards a section called Recall Instantly, this is what I want to bring to your attention. Let's read about this here. We set out to solve one of the most frustrating problems we encounter daily, finding something we know we have already seen before on our PC. Today, we must remember what file folder it was stored in, what website it was on, or scroll through hundreds of emails trying to find it. Now with Recall, you can access virtually what you have seen or done. We definitely want to focus on this word here on your PC in a way that feels like having a photographic memory. Copilot plus PCs organize information like we do based on relationships and associations unique to each of our individual experiences. This helps you remember things you may have gotten so you can find what you're looking for quickly and intuitively by simply using the cues you remember. So why did I want to focus on seen? Or done. Well, this seems to be Microsoft's new tool that can basically recall anything a user has seen or done on the PC. So there's not much of a leap here to say this is almost like a keylogger, but even more powerful as it takes screenshots and tracks your activity across your PC so much so that it has a quote unquote photographic memory. Let's see recall in action from the Microsoft keynote. Partners in the marketing team. And when I finally got around to add my content, I could not figure out where to look for the deck. I tried to remember. Was a deck shared in the call? Maybe I had seen it in an email, or maybe I could go and find it. In Gotta stop it here for just a second. Notice everybody on their phones right now, not necessarily even caring about this recall announcement. Anyways, pushing on. In my recent files in PowerPoint, I don't really have time to spend clicking around, but with recall, I no longer have to go on a searching expedition. I remembered in the outline we had added a purple chart with writing, a purple um, a chart with purple writing. Uh, and to find the PowerPoint, all I had to do was simply use my voice to search for that clue that I remember. In, in a few seconds, Recall found the deck for me. And notice that it took me. And that's really it. You'll probably start noticing the concern right away. This seems a little dystopian to me, but of course, don't worry. It'll help you find things easier and recall things that were on a timeline that you set. Again, in my imagination, this takes screenshots, remembers, and correlates things together all for you. What could go wrong here? You can scroll across time to find the content you need in your timeline across any application, website, document, or more. Emphasis on website. Interact intuitively using snapshots with screen ray to help you take the next step. Using suggested actions based on object recognition. Another big phrase here. And get back to where you were, whether to a specific email, an outlook, or the right chat in Teams. So going back to this, why I said we should focus on website, not only are we taking information and gathering it from your system, but are they really gathering information from websites, presumably in your browser? That seems like a whole nother level of tracking. Now don't worry because as it says here, recall leverages your personal semantic index built and stored entirely on your device. Your snapshots are yours. They stay locally on your PC. You can delete individual snapshots, adjust and delete ranges of time and settings, or pause at any point right from the icon in your system tray on your taskbar. You can also filter apps and websites from ever being saved. You, you are always in control with privacy you can trust. That's a bit of a laugh, but do we really trust Microsoft on keeping things private, secure, and local? I mean, a lot has to go right here, especially in the day of age where everything's connected to the internet. We can imagine some scenarios right away where this will fail. I can immediately think of one issue. Let's say someone gains access to your computer. Well, why in the world would they spend even half a second searching your system when they can simply use something like recall here to get information that you've looked through, visited, or even ask it questions, I presume, and all that information is supplied instantly. This is a wild one. Imagine it looking through documents where you've saved your passwords, where otherwise it may be hard to find on your system. Let's say you've buried it pretty deep in your system, maybe somewhere in the root, home, and then 17 folders deep. At least that's some sort of a system to try keeping people out, or maybe that folder is password protected and someone can't really get to it. Well, presumably, 
If Recall had seen that file at one point, it may even be able to find that document, at least point them in the right direction. And who knows if it's taken screenshots here, whether or not it's going to supply that screenshot with a password to them. This just seems wild to me. And it really begs the question on whether or not these AI powered machines are just going too far. Or is it just another fad that Microsoft is trying out? Remember Cortana. Cortana was promised to be your own personal assistant where you can talk to just by saying, hey, Cortana. And it would load up much like Siri so you can ask it a question and whatnot. But for those of you who remember, they went a little wild in Windows 10 by automatically supplying it in our taskbar. For those of you that remember, there was an ask me anything field with the Cortana symbol here. You could start typing away. This would start searching the internet. Even if you type something in there by accident, didn't matter. Cortana would scour the internet, which in my opinion, not only was resource intensive, it also seemingly broke things. And in my opinion, just a burden. That's why the end of support for Cortana was brought to the day. They retired the standalone app in 2023, trying to say that they're making room for co-pilot instead. Let's just make one thing clear. I believe that if Cortana was something that the users wanted, it would have stayed around. To me, it just seems like one of those items that is in the graveyard of failed attempts that Microsoft has done and specifically brought to Windows under the guise of trying to make things easier for us. But before I get into more issues with these co-pilot PCs and recall specifically, make sure to smash that like button for me to get future videos like this. But I found a page in their FAQs that really boils down what recall is. It gives us more information about recall. I'm not going into all of this, but I'm going to briefly go through some stuff, including the minimum hardware requirements to run this thing. That's right. We're going to be talking about system resources. So here it says you can recall on Copilot Plus PCs to find the content you viewed on your device. Recall is currently in preview status and they're looking for customer feedback. So make sure to give it. I'm going to give you a link so you can actually send that customer feedback to them towards the end of the video. So you'll want to stick around. But anyways, so how does recall work? If you didn't think things were dystopian yet. Let's read this paragraph here. Recall uses Copilot Plus PC's advanced processing capabilities to take images of your active screen every few seconds. The snapshots are saved and encrypted on your PC's hard drive, and then you can recall to locate the content viewed on your PC using a search and or timeline bar that allows you to scroll through your snapshot. So it's literally actively taking images of your active screen, aka screenshots, every few seconds. It's, it's openly omitted here. I don't see the disconnect here on why Microsoft believes this is a good idea to bring to people. Maybe I'm missing it. Please post in the comments section below what your thoughts are on this. But as we read in a previous article, it has the ability to track what we're doing online. How? Because it can take screenshots of web browsers. Now, I did see that if you're in a private window that they won't be taking screenshots, but how are we to trust that? What judgments do they make when you're using other browsers? Is it only for Edge? You know, we don't get all that information and we don't know the, all the background code that's running. We just need to basically have a trust me bro moment with them as they've definitely shown us in the past they can be trusted. Anyways, there's already browsing history in our browsers. Now we're just gonna give up that history to AI. Seems wild. And you might be asking yourself, is this coming to a computer near you? No, this is only for Copilot plus PCs. At least that's one saving grace. And back to system resources, as if Windows, known for its bloat, wasn't already taking enough storage space up on your computer. Well, the minimum hard drive space needed to run recall is 256 gigs, and 50 must be available for this feature. The default allocation of 256 gigs will be 25 gigs and will support three months of snapshots. Of course, conveniently, you can increase your own tracking through the PC settings. One other worry I have is, what about telemetry for employers? When businesses start wanting to know what's happening on their laptops that they're supplying to you, let's say that they are these co-pilot plus PCs, how long is it going to take before they start asking Microsoft to start selling some sort of enterprise level of this, like recall for the office, and making this tool in such a way that it gives access to employers to monitor what you do at work even further than they can today? It just all seems like a bad idea to me. But who am I to say? As I can personally say, I don't think think I can get behind this project at all. I'm happy that I'm using my Linux and Mac based systems as we might be going too far down the rabbit hole with this whole AI thing at this point. Hopefully people take this one seriously and think about switching over to Linux or even Mac OS at this point, or at least until Mac releases something equivalent. Hopefully that's not planned. Maybe they should be focused on hallucinations by AI instead of giving us all these wild apps. 
The last thing I want to talk about is sending feedback to Microsoft Feedback Hub app. That's right, in Windows 10 and Windows 11, there is a Feedback Hub app, so you can tell them how you feel. I'll post a link in the description below so you can supply your own feedback. Maybe you should let them know how you feel about recall, and I don't know what else to do besides at least encourage you to start looking at some alternatives to Windows. I have a video on the latest Ubuntu Linux that just dropped a few weeks ago. Maybe take a moment to watch that review and then the setup video so you know in the future you have options besides Microsoft Windows. This is just getting to be too much for me and I had to make a video and I didn't plan on making this video until I saw the dev announcements by Microsoft. It's just mind blowing and I had to give my opinions and concerns on this. Everything seems to be under the guise of advanced AI capabilities and technologies nowadays, but we raise significant privacy and security concerns with this, especially in the hands of Microsoft's history with user data. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments section below. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.